All right, today we're going to be looking at Factory by 8090. The first time I heard about this is actually from a post from Chamath. If you don't know him, he's the host on the All In Pod, a very well-known VC. So basically he says, hey, you don't need more tabs. You need alignment, execution, velocity, and one clean flow. Refinery turns your mess of ideas into crisp specs. Foundry turns those specs into real engineering plans. Planner break your engineering plans into buildable units. Assembler builds, integrates, and deploys. And validator checks if what you built actually works. So that's 8090 Factory. So I think it's his company. And then this is the one I ended up jumping on. It says we're in phased alpha rollout of Software Factory. If you want to try it out, jump in and get on the wait list. So I did that, I think, right away. So I ended up getting an invite to it. And here is Factory. So I think this could be really exciting. I like the idea of this a lot. Half the problem is getting organized or knowing which questions to ask. And this actually helps you ask the right questions. That's the best way I would summarize factory by 8090 is it's a tool that helps you to ask the right questions. So let me give you a quick run through. It's alpha. So really new. The best way that I could think of to describe 8090 based on my very cursory experience is it's sort of like a, a, a tool that really helps you communicate properly to your AI assisted development environment to um, help you write a really effective PRD to understand the requirements to work with you on extracting the details that are important um, so that the agent, in this case, I'm using cursor and I think Claude, that those two things have the best set of like information going in to help it build. And I think the approach here is sort of like human in the loop where it's not just going to one shot and build complicated things. It needs insights and information needs to plan with you before it begins. So this is a tool to really help you communicate. The first thing you want to know about, um, is there's these integrations with GitHub. So you have to connect to your GitHub. Uh, you just paste in the URL of the project. You have to authorize um, factory. And basically, it could see your code now, um, which is great. So basically, you could test to make sure it's there. Um, it'll index your code base. So it does this automatically. But basically, this is the very first thing you do if you have a pre-existing project. Because once you've done that, then um, factory can do smart things with your code when you get over to the refinery portion of it. Yeah, so the first thing you'll see is on the left-hand side of the drop-down, you have Project Console, which is like all the project-related settings, Refinery, Foundry, Planner, Assembler, and Validator, which does not yet exist. To begin with, you have the Refinery. This here describes the project that I'm working on, this thing called Turnip. Turnip is just a landing page, um, but it's going to be a marketplace for used kids' clothing. And, you know, I described what it is. I shared with it a screenshot of our homepage. This is like a, a browse page. It actually does do something. You can do listings and you can upload pictures and create a box for upload. But basically I shared with it a screenshot of that. And I wanted to see from that screenshot, could it help me write the, the actual like PRD and describe what it does. And it, it definitely was able to glean all of that just from an image upload. So I didn't write any of this stuff. I like gave it the picture and it was able to figure out what it, the app is supposed to do. And basically, you have this homepage now, which does nothing. And I was like, hey, it'd probably be a good idea to get some early signups. Yeah, so that's why I went ahead and said like, hey, let's create a signup page where people can express interest in getting on the early list to sign up for Turnip. So this is a very, very simple spec. I just said like, hey, go ahead and let people give us their full name, email address, and zip code and make sure it validates that we're not submitting duplicates on the email, et cetera, and create a new table called early access table in the database. And, you know, it's a, or the app is an XJS app, so it had to do the full sort of stack of actions that need to happen to make that work. And yeah, so then it created a, it used this PRD to create the steps required to actually make that work. You basically go from refinery to foundry, planner, and assembler. So it's sort of like a factory, hence the word factory. And so basically this is the, you know, I, I kind of, I find a little bit of the naming somewhat confusing to be honest, but it's fine. It works. So basically the refinery is, and again, like you could have a super complicated PRD. This is like a very, very simple one. This and the project super simple. It doesn't really get into the details of what it's actually going to do. And then you could do things over here, like create a summary of the PRD, which I already have. So let's go on to the next part. So basically, all right, we are in Foundry. So Foundry, what it does is it 
lays out the architecture of your platform. There are a couple of blueprints that it has that it has preset that you can pick. So for instance, you know, like what your front end middleware back end looks like, they have some preset, one preset version of that. And again, this is an alpha. So, and I just went ahead and said, Hey, like, look at the code base that I already had to figure it out. And it figured out that, Hey, it's next JS. It uses Postgres SQL uses Prisma as the ORM. It understood the schema, blah, blah, blah. So like basically it extracted all of this from the code base. And then it looked at the other document to figure out like, Hey, what do I need to do to make this, this form that's this early access page? What do, what do I have to do to make it work? You know, like what, uh, what do I have to do to the database? How's it going to get stored? All that stuff. So it, it like, it basically wrote all of this. I don't think I did much, maybe something on the email validation. I might've told it how to validate a zip code because it was it. And another thing I'll say is like, it actually asks you questions. Like as you go, like, Hey, like, um, follow up questions to help define what you're trying to do better. So that that's like, that's the magic. Cause before what I would do is I would go into chat GPT and like, be like, Hey, I need to create a PRD for this. I would create like a little project in chat GPT, write out the PRD, go back and forth with it, ask it to ask me questions. It would create a document. Then I would take that document, copy it over to cursor or Claude code or whatever, and then it would go ahead and do it. This kind of like ties it all together and extracts from you things you might not have thought of. So that's, I think, and the detail of this is way more detailed than what I had previously done. Um, and again, this is like literally just a form on the homepage. that's like, hey, give me your name, email address, and zip code to get on the list. So it does all this. And then when you're done with that, then you go over to Planner. And this is kind of where it actually ties in now to your to your your development environment. So these are all things that are already done. And you can see here what's in the scope, blah, blah, blah. And what it does is they have so they have an MCP, the software factory MCP server that that installs that basically now connects this back to your cursor. And you could make it work with other things that support MCP. But basically what you do is you're like, you create these work orders and these work orders are like individual discrete tasks that you tell cursor to do. And what cursor will do is it'll pick up the work orders and go do the work. And you could see the MCP, you know, has a couple of tool calls. One is like mark work order complete, which it does. And that's how these got marked as complete. And then, so there's two here that are currently in the backlog that that haven't been done yet. But so let me just show you what it's done thus far. So here's the page it made, which basically I feel like matches the look and feel of what I have so far, especially there's another page that's not published that it picked up the styling from. But basically the the MCP, all I had to do is like do all the work inside of 8090 factory, create all the PRD, create the, the work orders, this, and with the detail and you can go and customize these things as you go, if there's some mistakes and they do encourage you to do that, which I didn't do, but basically then it goes in, then you go into cursor and be like, Hey, go ahead and grab the next thing off the work order. So basically it'll grab the next one off the list and do it based on the spec. So here it's like the next one is, Hey, we want to do real time form validation, enable users to receive immediate encouraging feedback on the form as they fill it out. So basically green check marks for valid, red for invalid. So, so it's like, hi, I'm not getting a check mark. I should get a check mark to make me happy. So I'm just going to use that as the one to demonstrate how this works for you. So let's go ahead. We're going to click here and we're going to say ready. Okay. So then we'll go over here to cursor and we'll say, please start the Next work order. Let's see if this works. <laughs> Doing it live. Here we go. Should talk to MCP server, find the one that I just marked as ready. Call and get worker. Called it. Let's see what it finds. Perfect. Implement real time form validation. So there you go. See, that was the one that we just marked ready. So, you know, it's not the actual coding environment. It's not like a full agentic system. It's just something to like help you create much more cleaner and specific requirements for your work environment. It's noticing the lack of validation. It's creating a plan, 
would you like me to proceed? So I'm going to say yes. Now, again, like if this were super important, I would spend more time, but I just want to show you. So now this is all cursor at this point. Um, so basically all the MCP did was create a really, really solid plan for it. Okay, so it's creating a type, a couple of TypeScript files. We can take a peek, validation indicator, use real-time validation, and it's updating this form here. So it probably imported that thing. There it is. So it did import it. So now it's going to tell the fields to use those validation indicators. Now it's doing it to email. Now it's doing it to zip code. Checking for linting errors. See, I don't know how much of this is just pure cursor. It's running a build. I wouldn't have done that because it's already running on a server. Okay, so it's doing some testing here. I believe it's working. Okay, let me do, boom. So, see, look at it, almost there. Please check your email format, sandcheck at gmail.com. Boom, look at that. There we go, well done. So now it had a couple little TypeScript things, which it fixed, linting errors. But anyway, it completed it, and then it went ahead and called the work orders complete, and that's it. So now we go back over here to factory, and now if I refresh, this shouldn't say ready anymore, it should say completed. And survey says completed, so that works. There we go. That's a quick look at it. Let's go through assembler. I haven't figured out what to do here, like what exactly this thing does. Sorry if I'm moving the screen around. Yeah, I don't know exactly what assembler does. Validator does not yet exist. I think that's a testing environment. But yeah, like high level, I think it's super useful because basically I end up doing this anyway outside of a platform. I do it directly in ChatGPT or in Grok or Cursor, or sorry, or in Cloud rather. And then I end up with Google Docs and stuff and then I'm copying and pasting. I think this is better. I like the MCP, I like the way that that works. And it just seems like a nice orchestration to sort of increase your throughput as a developer and just make sure you're thinking of everything. And the nice thing is it actually asks you questions as you go to be like, hey, like for instance, the the whole like email address uniqueness thing, I wanted to make sure that they can't put the same email address multiple times in the database. It's like, do you want me to create a indicator to the user that they can't use multiple email addresses. I'm like, yeah, definitely. So it actually went ahead and created that step. So there's just a bunch of stuff you wouldn't have necessarily thought of and just organizing it all. There's a lot of terminology that I don't understand yet. So we had to spend more time here. But, and again, the thing is an alpha, but it's a very cool first look at the project. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a potential game changer. And just this like, you know, even if this is not the one, um, the idea of this, I think is really cool. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the first look and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.